God bless you, my friend, Dr. Ray Johnson here. Just wanted to make sure that we gathered together. This is session five, where we're gonna learn how to communicate and listen with love. As I always say, we're utilizing principles that come from the scripture. I know that you're saying, this is a marriage enrichment class, and it is, and it's for those who are engaged to be together, and those who want maybe some enrichment or maybe some house counseling or coaching help in their marital relationship. That's exactly what this is. It's session five of the I Promise series from Gary Smalley's How Five Commitments Determine the Destiny of Your Marriage. Having said that, I'm gonna share my screen with you and then I'm going to pray and then we'll take a moment and we'll get started and we will begin. I believe everyone should be able uh, to see the screen that is there. We're gonna start right from the beginning. And as we're doing that, I want you to bow your head and go ahead and pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you uh, for the persons or the couples, the group that's watching this. Lord, that they develop the communication skills that are necessary to help keep their marital relationship connected. Thank you, Lord, that we can learn everything that we need from your word that can help govern and guide our relationships one to another. Thank you for the time that we've got to share together today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let's go right ahead and let's get started, friends. Right within this first one, it's talking about five commitments to determine the destiny of your marriage. I promise to listen and communicate with love. Here's, a, here's the first thought-provoking statement. What would it be like to face every marital conflict with the common goal to find solutions that honor each other's needs. Oftentimes, we spend too much time point proving in our relationships one to another, rather than really trying to understand each other and to help the other person's needs be met. So critically important. Ephesians 4 and 29, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be of an encouragement to those who hear them. And there are six levels of communication. One is small talk, one is sharing facts, two, three are opinions. Opinions, these are those that can create the doorway to deeper intimacy. This is the place where we find values and beliefs. It's really where we come to really understand what causes our mate and our spouse to tick for them to be who they really are in relationship with us. And I would dare say this, these are so important that they get down into our whys. Our opinions help lead us to our whys. Why we are together, why we're in relationship, why we believe that this marriage is going to be the best marriage that it could ever possibly be. I wanna to continue to share with you next level, the next three are feelings, needs, and beliefs. The next three levels of communication are feelings, needs, and beliefs. Three ways to help your mate win every argument can be seen right on page 46. I'll summarize them for you. They have to do with making sure that we want to disarm the, the disagreement in the relationship by creating a sense of safety and security. You want to disarm every disagreement by creating safety and security. You wanna have the kind of relationship where your spouse can share everything with you, that they don't withhold anything back from you for fear that you'll later use it against them as you all are connecting. And so I wanna make sure if I paraphrase all of that, you'll find it that you can do that by one, you want to provide empathy. Two, you want to validate what it is that your spouse has said. And then three, you want to empower and encourage them to continue to and share in relationship with you. Oftentimes, relationships have a lot of small talk, uh, shallow conversations or cliches. How are you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> Please excuse the typo or please pass the salt. The question is, why would a couple get stuck here in this level of communication? And they get stuck, we all get stuck at that level of communication simply because of this. We get stuck here 
because it's not digging down deep enough to get to the root and the core issues of what's really going on in our relationship. Or here's the next one. We share facts. I was, it, I was hot today, or it was hot today, wasn't it? Can you believe what the president did today? The question is, why do you think there is little risk for an argument at this level? Because we're not dealing with the root issues about why we have conflict or the root issues about how we understand each other. That's so important for us in terms of causing the relationship to last and the relationship to work. In this sphere of communication, couples can explore under opinions, I should say, their concerns and expectations while it opens the door for disagreement. It also opens the door for greater intimacy, closeness, and security. The reason why is because you're getting down to your why. And how can you can reduce, how can you reduce the risk of conflict at this level? By again, disarming and creating a safe space for you and your spouse to be able to communicate with each other. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and move us to the video for insight with what Dr. Smalley shares with us. And I believe what you'll find is you'll find some key skills that can be used to help you grow in your relationship with your spouse. Take a look at this.
All right. I hope that that was helpful for you and that uh, you were able really to gain something out of that. Really understanding really is the key of how relationships are able to work well and how they're able to connect. Keep in mind, we want our spouse's needs to be met as we engage with them in terms of connecting with them. I wanna go back and share my screen with you and let's dive right back into where we were so that we are able uh, to, to finish out with this particular lesson for today. So feelings in the fourth level of communication, a couple feels safe enough to share their deepest, notice what he said, feelings and aspirations and treat each other's feelings in hopes with respect and care. This level of conversation is marked by an atmosphere of honor, look at this, and mutual admiration and affection. The listener tries to understand and validate what is being communicated. What does a judgment-free zone look like for you at this fourth level? How can you create that for your mate? And I would say again, it's about disarming your spouse in the discussion of a moment of conflict so that they feel safe and secure with you, that you're not going to come back at them later on and use the disagreement against them or use the feelings against them that they shared with you in a moment of creating a sense of security and safety so important that that take place and again I often teach the eve principle making sure that you have empathy that you validate and then that you encourage and empower validate means uh, do i hear you saying and do you mean when you say so critically important how often do you and your mate experience this level in a secure setting let me go back to one i want to make sure that i read that one the Bible implores to us above all else to guard our hearts since our heart is the seat of our core beliefs. Sharing these beliefs with one another achieves the deepest level of communication. And oftentimes many of our beliefs can be traced back to our childhood and our family history. Let me stop the share screen there. And this is so important when we get a fresh understanding of what it is that we are truly believing in, in terms of the connectivity with our spouses. Let's keep going here. So uh, that being the case, uh, we wanna make sure that we spend time, let me back up, I may have gone a little bit too far too fast. Um, yeah. What you believe about the core level of communication is critically important. So sharing these beliefs with one another achieves the deepest level of communication. That gets to what I call shared values. And what causes relationships to work are when the two of you, you value the same thing and you're able to be on the same page with each other. That is so important in terms of the connectivity of your relationships with each other. Let me continue on with this. Living on purpose. I want you to take time to review uh, page 51 uh, as you do your homework together. And then read chapter seven in the I Promise book. I want you to complete article four of your I Promise Marriage Constitution. Remember, this is a guide with principles of how we're going to operate with each other. I want you to look at page 53 as an example in your manual and take time to review page and do page 54. Those things are gonna help you as you grow in your relationship with your spouse. I hope that this session has been helpful for you. We'll come back and we'll do section, session six together and then spend some time, I'll schedule with you to meet with you all as a couple and we'll kind of walk through what your ceremony will look like, how your constitution can help govern and being able to walk in a sense of oneness with each other. I hope this has been helpful for you. We'll take time and we'll catch up together. We'll get together again real soon. God bless you, bye-bye.